One guy, Matt Eberflus, may not have his fate determined anytime soon. Chase Claypool needs to have his fate determined soon. They've kind of put him on ice, Chris. And Claypool could make a stink about this if he wants to. The 2006 collective bargaining agreement has a term in it, specifically as a reaction to the Terrell Owens debacle of 2005, where ultimately the Eagles sent him home with pay. And Keyshawn Johnson, you were in Tampa in 2003 when he got sent home with pay. You're not allowed to send a guy home with pay anymore. You're not allowed to pay a guy and tell him stay out of the building. And I, I think that this Claypool thing needs to end quickly or Claypool needs to file a grievance because the Bears cannot put him on ice, cannot pay him to not play. They've either got to bring him back, trade him, or cut him. And I'd like to think that the Bears will do the right thing in the aftermath of tonight's game. Yeah, well, <clears throat> this is this is part of, you know, probably why the talk about Eberflus is out there is things like this with Chase Claypool. It makes it look right a little bit, you know, less buttoned up or dysfunctional with like, wait, this is a guy that we, we traded a, a pretty big asset for to get. And he's supposed to be a contributor and we know he's got talent and all that. But again, that was a management thing. Right. That was now Claypool's obviously not happy with the way things go or not getting the ball and and everything there. But, yeah, something's got to be done there. I mean, one, it stinks for them. You know, he's supposed to be helping their team out. He's dangerous. We know that. We've seen moments of him going like, damn, he's a freak of nature. I saw him at Notre Dame. You know that. I was the one pumping him up when he was coming out in the draft. I mean, he's built like a Greek god. He flies. But the same thing at Notre Dame and the same thing at Pittsburgh a little bit and the same thing here with Chicago, and this is where I don't blame Eberflus, right, is that there was immaturity questions about him and how he handled himself. Did he do the right things in the locker room? and saying things the right way there. And that's not only Eberflus didn't trade for that. That was that, you can blame that on Ryan Poles if you want to get like real, you know, uh it, 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 you know, detailed in this whole thing here. But yeah, it's not a good look for their organization altogether. And when you take that with what happened with last week in the game and then of course what happened with the defensive coordinator also last week while preparing for the game and all of that, yeah, none of it looks good right now in Chicago. Well, I think any time the Steelers call you up and say, we've got a deal for you, we've got a receiver that we may be trading, just hang up the phone because uh, the Steelers do a good job. Mike Tomlin does a great job of keeping stuff under wraps. Yeah. They know how to find receivers, but yeah. they know when receivers have become problems and it's time to move on. And I think Chase Claypool had such a great start to his career, he got ahead of himself. Maybe. He's thinking about how much money he's going to make. He's thinking about how – how successful he'll be at one point within the past 18 months or so he declared himself to have the talent of one of the top three receivers in the nfl and there was a point where you could plausibly make that argument but you still can't lose sight of the work that you need to put in there's that word again work you got to put in the work you got to put in the time you don't just show up you don't cop an attitude like you're one of the highest paid players in the nfl before you are the Steelers passed him off to the Bears, who gave up what became essentially the last pick in round right. one because the Dolphins didn't have a first-round pick. So it was pick 32 that the Steelers used to get Joey Porter Jr., and now it ends up being a disaster. But the bottom line is this. They're done with him. Organizationally, they're done with him. They know no one's going to trade for him. I guess they're thinking we'll pay him to the end of the season. He'll leave in free agency and we'll pick up a draft pick in 2025 via the compensatory formula, I don't understand it. Because if you waive him now, he's not a vested veteran. You cut him now. He goes through waivers. Somebody may pick up that contract. It's $2.3 million. I don't know. Maybe somebody will. The way that this is all happening, yeah. I can't imagine anybody saying, well, we can't wait to get our hands on Chase Claypool waiver claim. So bottom line is this. You got to put the guy in the building, or you got to trade him, or you got to cut him. You can't send him home with pay. That's established. And the moment Chase Claypool wants to activate that process, the Bears will lose. The Bears are in the wrong with what they're doing, unless Chase Claypool is 100% in agreement with it. If he wants back in, if he wants to be around, if he wants to work out, if he wants to practice, if he wants to play, he's got a, an ironclad 100% case against the Bears. The Bears are in the wrong here. You can't send a guy home. With pay. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.